Awesome YouTube, in this video I'll be showing you how to make the sword from Attack on Titan, and for you nitpickers out there, I'm well aware that this is way more than just a sword, I know that it's part of the 3D manoeuvring gear, however, number one, that wouldn't be very fun to make, and number two, for titling purposes, we'll just be calling this the sword, so if you want to make it, here's what you're going to need. You will need some black wool, you'll need brown wool, dark grey, light grey, and finally, some white wool. Those are the only colours that you're going to be needing, so once you have those, and once you've figured out where you want to make it, I'll be making it right here, you'll want to kick off your sword with a row of four black wool in a row on the floor. So that's one, two, three, four. Once you have your row of four black wool, this is what you want to do next. Starting from the left hand block of your row of four, do an up left diagonal. Place one block on top of it. Then go to the right of that block by five. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Then go down from this fifth block by one to reconnect all the way back over to the right hand side of your original row of four. Once you have that done, you now want to come up to the upper left hand side of what you've just made and starting from this block right here, do an up left diagonal. And place three on top, so that's one, two, three. Then go to the right of that diagonal by seven, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then go down from the seventh block by three, so that's one, two, three, to reconnect back to what we've just made. Once you now have this shape, this is what you want to do next. Come up to the upper left hand side of what you've made again, and starting from this block right here, place one block on top of this first block. On top of this second block, place four blocks coming up. So on top of the second block, to the right, four blocks coming up. So that's one, two, three, four. Then from this fourth black wall, do an upright diagonal. And place two on top. One, two. Then do another upright diagonal. And place five on top. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Then go to the left of this fifth block by by five, so that's one, two, three, four, five. Then from this fifth block, do an up left diagonal. And go to the left of it, by one. Then do two up left diagonals, so that's one, and two. Go up on top of the second up left diagonal, by nine, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then go right of this ninth block by ten, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then from this tenth block, do three bottom right diagonals, so that's one, two, and three. Go down from the third bottom right diagonal by one. Then go right by two, so that's one, two. Then go down from the second block by twelve, that is one, two, twelve. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Then do a bottom left diagonal. And go down from that diagonal by three, so that's one, two, three. Then do another bottom left diagonal. And go down from that diagonal by three, so that's one, two, three. All being well, that third block should reconnect all the way back over to the right hand side of what we were just making and give you a really weird looking, kind of queuish shape, which should look exactly like this. Once you've reached this point right here, this is what you want to do next. So you're going to want to come back down to the bottom-ish of what you've just made, and you want to locate this block right here. 
Once you've located this block, and it shouldn't really take you too much effort to find it, once you've located this block, you want to go up on top of it by four. So that's one, two, three, four. You then want to do an upright diagonal. And go on top of that diagonal by two. So that's one, two. Then do an upright diagonal. And go on top of that diagonal by six. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Go to the left of the sixth block by one. Then return back to the sixth block and continue going up on top of it by a further seven. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You then want to go to the right of the seventh block by one. And all being well, you will reconnect all the way back up to the top of what you've just made and give you something which should look a little bit like this. Once you've done that, this is what you want to do next. So come up to the upper left hand side of the shape that we've just made where we have this big open space here. Come down to this row. This row right here, this row of black wool. And on top of this row of black wool, place an entire row of dark grey wool directly on top of it, like this. On top of the first five blocks, starting from the left of your row of dark grey, place a row of five black wool, like that. Then, starting from the left hand side of your row of five black, do two upper left diagonals. So that's one and two. You then want to go up on top of the second up left diagonal by five. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Then go right of this fifth block by one. Then go up by one. Then go right by a further five. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Then do a bottom right diagonal and go down from that diagonal until you reconnect back to where you just first started. You don't really have to count it out, just keep going down until you reconnect diagonally. You should be left with a shape that should look exactly like this. Once you've done that, this is what you want to do now. So, starting from the middle block of the right hand side of the shape that we've just made where we have this long row of black wool, Take the middle block and take out your light grey and starting from the middle block just do a horizontal row of light grey that connects the left hand side and the right hand side of what you've just made together. Like this. You don't really have to count out the blocks or anything, just eyeball it. Once you have your row of light grey, you then want to place a row of black wool on top of and below it to give you something which should look a little bit like that. And what we've just made there, you may not be able to identify it just yet. You know on the hilt how it's got those like two triggers which I'm not exactly sure what they do. It's something to do with the grappling hooks. That one fires it and one like reels it in or something. That's what we've just made right there. Once you've got that taken care of, we can progress a little bit further with the hilt of our sword. So, come up to the upper left hand corner of what you've just done, and we do have a nice little corner here. And on top of this block that I have highlighted right here, go up by one. Then, do an upright diagonal. And go up by two, so that's one, two. Then, go left by one. Then do a bottom left diagonal, and go left by one. Then go down by four, so that's one, two, three, four. Then do two bottom left diagonals, so that's one, two. Go down from the second bottom left diagonal by three, so that's one, two, three. Then do two bottom right diagonals, so that's one, Two. Go down from that second bottom right diagonal by eight. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then do two bottom left diagonals. So that's one and two. 
go left of your second bottom left diagonal by one. Then do an up left diagonal. Then do two up right diagonals, so that's one and two. Go up on top of the second up right diagonal by six, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Then do two up left diagonals, so that's one and two. Go up on top of the second up left diagonal by five, so that's one, two, three, four, five. Then do two up right diagonals, so that's one and two. Go up on top of the second up right diagonal by three, so that's one, two, three. You then want to take this third block and go right of it by one, but also go left of it by one as well. Then go up on top of this left block by three, so that's one, two, three. You then want to go right of this third block by one. Then do two bottom right diagonals, so that's one and two. And that second diagonal should reconnect all the way back to where we were just building and give you something which should, in total, look exactly like this. I realise that the hilt's looking a little weird at the moment, but this part of the sword is its kind of like... In front of the triggers, they have that handle, which kind of looks like the brake handle off of a bike, like a push bike. I'm not exactly sure what it's for exactly. Maybe it's to control the propulsion system or something, or maybe it's to stop the... I don't know what it's for, but that's what we've just built. Once you've done that part right there, we can now continue on. So come all the way back up to the top of what we were just making. You want to locate this block right here where we just did two diagonals from. And now from this block, you want to go up by one. Then go to the right by one. Then do two upright diagonals. So that's one and two. Go right of that second upright diagonal by one. Then do a bottom right diagonal. Go right by four. So that's one two, three, four. Then go down by two, one, two. Then go left by one, and then do two bottom left diagonals, so that's one and two. That second bottom right diagonal should reconnect back to roughly where we were just building and give you a shape which should look like this. A lot of this next part is going to involve us doing a lot of backtracking like this, so once you've done that, we can now continue on. So come up to this block right here, this kind of like right-hand corner block that we were just working on, and from this block, you now want to go up by one. You then want to go to the right by, this requires a little bit of counting, guys, I don't want to get this wrong, by... By 10, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You then want to, going down from this 10th block, go down by 3, so that's 1, 2, 3. You then want to go right of this 3rd block down by 1. Then do 2 upright diagonals, so that's 1 and 2. Go to the right of the 2nd upright diagonal by 2. 1, 2. Then go down by 1. Then do 2 bottom left diagonals, so that's 1 and 2. Go to the left of the second bottom left diagonal by 2, so that's 1 and 2, to give you a shape which should look a little bit like this. You guys won't be able to recognize this just yet, but that little shape that we've just made on the right hand side that kind of looks like the outline of a Tetris block, kind of, that's what kind of disengages and engages the blade, so you can, like, swap them out. Once you've done that, you now want to come back down to this little row of three that we have here. And starting from this middle block, you want to go down by one. Actually, you want to go down by two. I apologize. So that's one and two. Then go right of this second block by two. So that's one, two. Then do a bottom right diagonal and go down by one. Then do a bottom left diagonal, and go left by one. 
then do two bottom left diagonals, so that's one and two. Finish this section off by going down from the second bottom left diagonal by one to give you a shape which should look a little bit like this. Once you've completed this shape right here, we just have to backtrack on ourselves a little bit and then we'll have finished with the outline. So once you've reached this part right here, this is what you want to do next. What's the easiest way to do this, guys? I think I know. So come up to this block right here. You guys should be able to locate this no problem on the kind of middle left hand upper side of our sword. From this block, you want to go to the right with your black wall by four. So that's one, two, three, four. You then want to take this fourth block and go up by two. So that's one, two. But you also want to go down from this block by three. So that's one, two, three. Now take this third block and go right by four. So that's one, two, three. Three, four. You now want to go up from this fourth block by three, so that's one, two, three. Then go right of the third block by one, but you will also want to go up on top of the third block by two, so that's one, two, to reconnect you back to the top. Once you've formed this shape right here, the last thing you have to do is coming back down to this bottom line where we just started going up from. Take this block here and go to the right by three, one, two, three, to reconnect all the way back to the right hand side of the sword. And I realize that it's a little bit dark, but I don't think that it's particularly difficult to see what I've just done there, and it shouldn't be too hard for you guys to copy that failing any instructions there. So that is what you want to have for the upper part of the hilt of your sword. So once you've done that, as I said, you've pretty much completed the entire outline for the hilt of your sword. All we'll have to do is color this in and then we can work onto the blade. So I'll be back in a moment once it's nice and light so we can see this properly. So back in a moment. Alright guys, so once you've reached this point right here in which you have pretty much the entire outline of the hill all laid out, all we have to do now is colour this thing in and then we can move on to the blade. So once you have reached this point right here, colouring in time. The way that this is going to happen, there's only three colours that exist in this part of the pixel art, so I'm just going to add them all in individually and then show you guys the end result. I don't think it's going to work out if I try and instruct you any further. So first things first, we're just going to add all of the brown that exists onto our sword, which is just the handle portion, this big shape that we have on the bottom right hand side of our sword is just to be filled in with brown wool and it should look a little bit like this very simple that is all of the brown that exists within this sword that is it so add that pause as if necessary once you have we're now going to add all of the dark gray that now exists for this lower part of our sword for the hilt so we're going to start with the bottom and just work our way up the top it's it's not going to be difficult at all to add in quite honestly all of the uh, dark grey exists pretty much next to the outline, so once you've got the dark grey added in, all you'll have to do then is just add in all of the light grey, and uh, you shouldn't have too many, or any problems, hopefully, that's the plan, so I'm just going to quickly add in all of this dark grey around the sword. And, uh, and we'll be good. There's not actually that much to add in. The dark grey really, the only reason that I had it in here, it was just completely light grey, the sword, um, when I made it, but I decided that it was a little too plain. It needed some highlights, it needed some shadows. It, um, it just didn't look particularly good, in my opinion, with uh, just light grey. So I added some in, just for some shadowy effects. Makes it look a little better. IMO, but that's just me. You guys might have different opinions. Uh, just about added all of the uh, all of the dark grey, as I said, all around the outline. Um, I'll start by showing you this upper half, as the lower half is actually quite simple. Um, 
I'll even, you know what, I'll even make this ever so slightly easier. Let me take off the uh, the hood. I'll throw away a dark grey as a symbol. And there you go, that is all of the dark grey that exists on the upper part of the hilt of your sword. Very, very simple indeed. Hopefully you guys won't have any trouble adding that in for yourselves. So, pause this, add in all of the dark grey around your hilt. Once you've completed that, we can move on. However, I do have the little lower part to show you as well, just at the base of the sword. I don't know what this thing's called at the bottom. I'm pretty sure it has a name, but you've just got a few strips of dark grey to add in there as well. So once you've also added that, you may need to pause this. Once you've also added that, we can now move on. And as I said, all you'll have to do now is just move all around your sword and fill everywhere else in with light grey, which is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to do it on recording. Um, I'm not sure how much of uh, the filling in I'm going to have. I don't think I'll leave all of the filling in of the actual blade part on the recording, but the hill isn't too bad. It's not too big, so I'll just uh, I'll just leave this in here. Why not? And once you have filled in all of your light grey, um, you'll be left with a nice little finished product minus the blade. The blade's not actually too difficult to make. It's it's really easy. It's um, it's just quite big, is all, and. Um, you guys will see exactly how big it is once uh, you've finished this little portion right here. So, just doing this as quick as possible. Not not quick enough, but you know, whatever. You guys have to do this as well, so you could either leave the video running here, or you could just pause this and then skip ahead where necessary. But I'm just going to very quickly fill this in. Just uh, done the brake handle or whatever that is. It's got to be some sort of brake. I was thinking about this earlier. I was thinking about the design of this sword. And that thing on the front of the sword must be some sort of brake to stop the grapple. Like, I've seen them in the uh, in the anime or the cartoon, whatever you want to call it. I've seen them hanging off walls and just kind of static. So, I figure that that must be some sort of brake system. Or it can't... I don't know. It's a mystery. I'll have to look into this thing because it is a very interesting design. And once you have filled in the entire... I'm going blank on what this thing's called. The entire hilt of your sword. This is exactly what it should look like. As I said, very, very simple color scheme. Hopefully you guys won't have too much trouble filling this in. But this is what it should look like once you've completely finished it. Once you have reached this part right here. And as always, pause this if necessary. If you're filling any of that in. We can now move on to the blade. So, now come all the way up to the top of your sword. Where we have this very long row of black here, I don't know how long it is, 11 or 12, one of the two. What you basically want to do is coming over to the left hand side of this long row of black, you want to come to the second block in, coming in from the left, this one right here, and on top of this block, with your black wool, you want to go up by two, so that's one, two. Then go right of this second block by one. Then do an upright diagonal. Then do a bottom right diagonal. And go right of that bottom right diagonal by two. So that's one, two. Then do an upright diagonal. Then do a bottom right diagonal. You then want to go to the right by one. And then to connect everything back together again, go down by one to give you a shape which should look like this. And once you've made that shape actually, whilst we're here, just fill the entire middle section in with dark grey wool. And that is the actual final part of the hilt that I kind of forgot about. I would have included this in the previous part of the tutorial, however, it kind of slipped my mind. This is the part of the hilt that the blade engages and disengages out of. So, once you've got that taken care of, we can now actually, as I've been saying, move on to the blade. So, once you've done that, come up to this block right here. This one that I have highlighted. And on top of this block, you want to go up by 70 with your black wall. That's right, 7070. I'm not going to count all of this out, but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 40, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, whoops, 
7, 8, 9, 10, 50, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 60, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and that should be 70, or thereabouts, it doesn't have to be exactly 70, but about 70, and you'll be good. So, once you've placed this 70th block right here, you then, from this 70th block, want to do an upright diagonal. And then go up on top of it by 1. Then do an upright diagonal. And go up by 1. Then do an upright diagonal. And go up by 1. Then do another upright diagonal. And go up by 1. Then do another upright diagonal. And go up by 1. Then do... Another upright diagonal, and go up by one. Then do two upright diagonals, so that's one and two. So you want to end up at the top of your blade with something that should look like this. And the reason that I stumbled a little bit back there was to make sure that I had the right repetitions of the little two blocks going up. You should have in total six of those like two blocks that are just stacked on top of each other. So starting from the left, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's right. And then you should just have your two upright diagonals. And once you have this, you now want to take the second upright diagonal right here. And assuming that everything's right, you want to go down from it and you want to connect that block all the way back down to the top of the hill and it should connect to the other side of where we started to give you something which I'm not going to zoom out and show you this but it should look a little bit like this you guys know how this should look so once you've taken care of the blade the outline of the blade this is what you want to do now we have a bit of detail to add so all the way up the left hand side of the blade you want to take out your white wool and you want to do a long strip of white wool that just kind of like inlines the left hand side of your blade. So just as I'm doing now you just want to run up white wool all along the left hand side of your blade and you also want to do the exact same thing for like the edge of the blade, the top of the blade the little slanty part at the top like that, so with your white wool. And again, I don't really want to zoom out again because it takes quite a bit of time, a lot of moving about, but you guys can see exactly what I've done there. A long row of white wool all the way up the left-hand side and the exact same thing for the top there coming up to the tip of the blade right there. And once you've done that with your white wool, you now want to come all the way back down to the bottom again, right here. You want to come to the right-hand side and what we're now going to do, I'm not sure whether you guys may have noticed, you probably did but on the blade it's kind of like scored in each equal, equal sections there's like horizontal lines every so often on the sword and that's exactly what we're going to be adding in now so starting from this block right here on the right hand side you want to take out your light gray wool and you want to go up from this black wool by nine with your light gray so right here one two three four five six seven eight nine and then you want to place on top of the ninth block a single dark grey wool, like that. So you want 9 light grey and then 1 dark grey. And on top of that, you want to do the exact same thing. You want to repeat the pattern. You want to do 9 light grey, 1 dark grey, 9 light grey, 1 dark grey, etc, etc. Until you have, in total, you want to have 6 dark grey. So you want this pattern repeated 6 times. So this is, this is once. Now on top of here, with your light grey, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Then 1 dark grey, so that's twice. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1 dark grey, that's 3 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Then 1 dark grey, that's 4 times. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1 dark grey, that's 5 times. And now for a final time, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1 dark grey, that is the final time all the way up there, all the way up near the top 
Um, the pattern, for whatever reason, stops repeating when you get near to the actual, like, the edge of the blade, the top of the blade. So you want to end up with something that should look like that, just that repeating pattern in total six times. So you want to have six dark gray walls. And what you then want to do, once you've reached this point right here, is you want to do this. You want to extend the dark grays that we have on the right-hand side of the blade all the way over to the left-hand side of the blade. And you just want to do that with each one of your six dark gray walls. So from the right hand side just drag it over all the way onto the left hand side so that it's touching the white wool on the left so with each one of those you just want to have the dark gray move all the way over to the left hand side and touch the white wool like that and all that's left to do once you have done all of that is you now just have to fill everywhere else inside the blade with your light gray wool so inside everywhere just fill everywhere in with light gray wool it's going to be very tedious and i'm not going to leave this in the recording because it'll it'll just add unnecessary time and i'll run out of things to say quite honestly i can already feel my voice going this has been quite a strenuous tutorial so i'm going to be back in a moment once the entire blade's been filled in with light gray wool and then we can marvel at this thing because we'll be finished so i'll be back in a moment with this thing completely done so this is what it should look like once you've 100 percent fully completed your sword just to finish off off that little blade section i already said it but all you had to do was just fill everywhere else in the blade in with light gray and that's what it should come out looking like once you've finished that hopefully you guys should be left with something that should look a little bit like this and this may sound a little arrogant considering the fact that i designed this but i think that it's looking pretty good believe it or not guys i actually put a lot of time and effort into this this was really difficult to make Number one, you can't get a really clear picture of what the actual sword's supposed to be like. You can get a lot of pictures of what people think it's supposed to look like, but it's actually hard to get like a real clear still view of the actual sword like in the anime. Number two, there's a lot going on with it. I mean, just the handle alone at the top with like the trigger mechanisms and you've got the disengaging part and you've got like the brake handle part of the front of the sword it's really hard and number three you've got the actual curve of the handle like it's not just a straight shape it's it's really hard to make so it may not be 100 percent exactly the sword but it's as close as i could possibly get and obviously it's not going to look 100 percent because i've taken away the cables or the wires or whatever you want to call it that would attach it to the uh, 3dmg gear so that's what it's came out looking like i still think that it looks pretty good even though it's probably not 100 percent factual to the actual sword but it's as close as i wanted to get and i did want to get pretty close because i actually watched the series um, two days ago I watched it in two solid days that's how much I enjoyed it and I was immediately inspired to make this uh, it took a couple of hours but it's looking pretty good and I've just realized I've been talking for like two solid minutes so hopefully you guys have found this easy enough to follow thanks for watching I hope you like this I really did put a lot of effort into this thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video <laughs>